Stand down! I won't ask a second time. In 1986, Transformers the movie, actually sorry, I mean THE Transformers THE movie. Seriously, I don't understand why they called it THE Transformers THE movie. Makes no sense whatsoever. This film comes out in 1986 with a banging soundtrack. You got the Arise, Rodimus Prime. Optimus. Yeah! Decent story with Optimus Prime dying, which I don't mind, it worked well for the film. But roll over to the 2000s and everyone wants to make remakes of toys and cartoon. I mean, you had films back in the day. Let's use Masters of the Universe, for example, a live action film adapted from mainly the toys, but that was practically the start of a new era in filmmaking, especially for Hollywood. This led production companies to team up with toy companies, and unfortunately, they thought it'd be a good idea to get none other than Mr. Explosion himself, Michael Bay, to direct their Transformers film into live action. Shit! The film that came out in 2007 was a financial success, which was actually massively frustrating considering the film was horrendous. Are you username Ladies Man 217? I don't know what you're talking Are about! Are you username Ladies Man 217? Yeah? Where the Transformers The Movie succeeded in the film being on their planet, this new iteration was set on Earth, and there was too much emphasis on the human characters, which basically turned it into another bang average movie, as the story was terrible. You got Shia LaBeouf screaming all the time. It seems as if the general consensus is very happy with stories that make no sense and have plenty of explosions and fight scenes where you can't understand what's going on because everybody looks exactly the same. Oh! A bullshit artist! Now this trend continued in his next film, Revenge of the Fallen. In this film, Optimus Prime dies. I remember going to the cinema to see this one with one of my good friends, and he was in tears when Optimus Prime died. But I think the reaction to when he comes back to life was priceless. I loved the expression on his face. I loved his enthusiasm. When I did talk to him recently about the Michael Bay abominations, he had opened up his mind a little bit and realized that the stories that Michael Bay had been telling were below par. Shia LaBeouf trying to get it on with an inanimate object was embarrassing. I mean, no wonder why he quit the franchise. Where we were at in the second movie, you know? We, we were given a date, we were given a bunch of money, we were given a bunch of toys, and we had no script. And it was a writer's strike, so you couldn't get one if you wanted one. We weren't making a movie to make a good movie, we were making a movie to hit a date. The third film, Dark Side of the Moon. I mean, it's a crap name for a title when they don't even add side into it, so I already despised it. You took your package out? Whoa! You the package Whoa! Out, you know we are not boyfriends, okay? One phone call from me and I'll have you fired. Oh yes, I will, Gaylord. For me, it was the worst film in the collection. It was just screaming once again and far too many explosions. Oh wait, all these films have too many explosions. My first thought is... Oh my god, how many explosions are there going to be in this movie? <laughs> and is he going to be able to control himself? The answer is no, because he comes back with a full film with new characters and Mark Wahlberg heading the cast. It's just us and them. And you chose them. Anytime. To be honest, I don't mind this one, but I do have one major gripe, and that's when the kid goes all... Welcome to Peter Geddon with some stupid card that says he can go out with underage girls. We've got a pre-existing juvenile foundation relationship. Statute 2705-3. What? Texas statute? Is that a real law? Yep. I mean, Michael, this film, this movie franchise is supposed to be for kids. They don't deserve punishment. They deserve punishment. The franchise then slips and bumps its head with The Last Night. And you know what? That film was an absolute pile of shit as well. I'm a liar, I'm a charlatan. I've deceived my whole life, but if I could, for one moment, change this world for the better, I would give up everything, everything. I'd give up drink, money, win, drink and money. Less said about that film, the better. The franchise was dying and it was in desperate need of a reset. So now Paramount Studios decide, oh, you know what? Let's make Michael Bay a producer instead of making him a director. And you know, it makes no difference. Ah, uh, come on! That's a bunch of horse shit! And they attempted this stupid standalone film for Bumblebee. They tried to, like, get John Cena to front the movie. With little impact on the box office, but, you know, at least they made a profit, eh? And now we arrive at this new film, Rise of the Beasts. 
and you see that the humans play primary role again. Plenty of Michael Bay explosions. And you know what? Poor Stephen Cable Jr. had no chance for telling the story his way. Rise of the Beast is set in 1994 in New York somewhere so they could just use classic hip hop songs. I mean, I, I do like that bit. And also RC, yeah, that's sick. Mm, love that. One thing that this film attempts to change though is the demographic of their audience to Latino and African Americans. But this film fails to be anything more than just another Transformers live action bore fest. You gotta come see this movie. It's, it's ridiculous. It's so amazing. It's got an incredible soundtrack, great cast. The visuals are stunning. I mean, I like that they film with the real Transformers. I mean, wow, look at that. Oi, 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 that must have been well fun to film. I'm so excited about these statues because uh, it, it makes me realize where I actually should have been looking when we were shooting the movie. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Oh yeah, in terms of the story, the good guys and the bad guys are looking for a key. And that's about it. Honestly, another waste of time. There is seriously zero point of actually punishing yourself to see this wet fart of a movie. Certainly not the worst, as there are redeemable things within the movie. First is the action. It's the best it's ever looked. Transformers has always been a difficult watch. You come out with a migraine after watching just a clash of silver on silver. It's like watching the T-1000 make love to each other. Is it the T-1000? It's just too much. As far as like the action, besides like, you know, Ramos and Dominique are amazing. Everybody's great in it, but like, you really can tell who's fighting who. Fortunately, this film actually takes a lot of care in detail, really. Second is the choice of our two main human characters, who are definitely the best pairing ever in this franchise. And so I remember talking to Anthony one day and saying, hey, the one of my top actresses, like the top actress I want, her name is Dominique Fishback. And he goes, me and Dominique go way back. Like, we're really close friends. And I was like, wait, what? He was like, yeah, we're both from Brooklyn, this, that, and the other. So everybody had a connection. I was like, this might be perfect. You've got, like, what, Megan Fox and Shia LaBeouf? Who, I mean, that pairing was just painful. And the other pairings uh, were totally forgettable. I mean, what, we had Mark Wahlberg. Um, I don't even know who his guy was. Was it his daughter? I don't even... It was rubbish. Third was the brief appearance from the resident doctor Gloria Nathan of HBO epic show Oz. You know what I know and you feel what I feel. Ryan! Ryan! Officer! Hold on. You, you haven't seen Oz. You don't know what I'm talking about. Huh. You called somebody and asked him for a favor. Why would I do that? Because a session the other day didn't go your way. Because you couldn't manipulate me. Because you're a twisted fuck. Fourth was the ending. For the first time in a Transformers film, I thought this end sequence was the most satisfying and has also opened up an opportunity to capitalize on the toys they've created all them years ago, with Hasbro definitely wanting to create their own cinematic universe. And that's, that's the good stuff. Aspects I didn't like was the story for starters, which took us, I mean, it didn't really take us anywhere. It took us to Peru. Definitely took us to Peru. It's some Indiana Jones type shit. It felt like another Michael Bay Transformers film, which is never a good thing. It has the cheesy dialogue, too many humans, and a fair amount of explosions to boot as well. The faux deaths in this film were just stupid ideas. Just commit to the deaths and move on, like they did in The Transformers The Movie. It's very simple. This isn't the first time you've done dirty on audiences, but it seems as if the formula for Transformers works. Five billion at the box office. I mean, that's serious money. The main character, Nate Diaz, um, sorry, I meant Noah Diaz, slip of the tongue really, but he's our protagonist and a guy who claims he's not a thief, when two times he's going for a steal, he starts to claim otherwise, oh, I'm not a thief, I'm not a thief, or well, you're robbing a car. Such a grounded good guy, eh? It's what we want. Optimus Prime had nothing to do here, so a little pay packet there for Peter Cullen. Good work. I'm really, really proud and honored to be such a cool, disciplined, devoted, divine, feminine woman. Even though I was really happy to see RC in the movie, she didn't really have anything to do. The nice little slow motion bit, yeah. But underutilized, I'd say. The Maximals, the Maximals, the Maximals, the, Ma the Animal Transformers. They only got an appearance for, what, 15 minutes overall in the film? Very suspect. Very suspect. Lastly, Back 
Oh, I thought we were boys. Pete Davidson was good at first, but he really got on my tits about 10 minutes later. Yo, Donkey Kong, stay away from my friend. Um, Rush. Don't worry, your boys got this. Uh -oh. Stranger danger! Stranger danger! I mean, they could have killed him off early, like in that Bodies, Bodies, Bodies film, but unfortunately not. I'm excited for the audience to experience the different Transformers that are coming into play, like the Maximals. A lot of people haven't seen that on screen. They haven't seen an allyship like that before, too. So I'm really glad that they'll see them and also see how they transform because it's totally different from a regular Transformer. I've seen her in a Ryan Murphy created show called Pose. I recommend that TV show to everyone. To be fair, I recommend most of Ryan Murphy's stuff. He's solid. I still go back to Nip Tuck from time to time. No word of a lie. It's a pathology. No, you screwed me when I was 12 and you said that you loved me. Is this what you want, Matt, to be a part of their sickness? It didn't happen, Matt. Word on a grapevine is that there's two more Rise of the Beast films to be released over the next few years. Ugh, some more dross to come out of Paramount Pictures. Just make more Top Gun films. Seriously, what is your issue? You're harder to kill than a cockroach on steroids. I'm begging that these Transformers films just die a quick death. And they won't last long in the cinema. Be on Paramount Plus in no time. Hopefully the next two come straight out on DVD. Or Paramount Plus, whatever you want to call it. But not in the cinema. We seriously don't need any of this Transformers bullshit. Just make an animation more accurate to the original cartoon and the Transformers the movie version because that film is still the benchmark in what a Transformers film should be. Autobots, transform and roll out to a theater near you. 